All right, morning, morning. It is like 7.45, June 5th, day before the birthday, yay! So the mountains are giving me a little birthday gift. As you can see, it's just condensed mist and rain. Um, we're in a cloud. So all of yesterday was this type of weather. Um, it's supposed to break in theory in two hours. We don't know. Magpie peed on the ground tarp again. No, that's not, that's just tannic water. Mm, Magpie peed again. No. We've tried to train her like a puppy. Stop it. Okay. Um, but yes, it just rained all day um, and all night last night. Should break around like 9 a.m. Don't really know. I'm wearing like four layers of clothing right now and it's still real cold. So I'm gonna stop filming um, and start continuing packing so we can get moving. I wanted to just film you the tent though, the tenant area and how wet everything is. The joys, the absolute joys of backpacking. My hands are icicles. All right, I gotta stop filming and we gotta keep moving. I can't stop filming. <laughs> the, my hands are so cold, the button doesn't recognize it as fingers. They're like, what is this? It's touching the button, it's trees. Might be breaking the mist. We might be breaking the mist. Hopefully, it's gnar up there. But now we're starting to drop some elevation. So, good things. Good things. Is this a state line, or is it saying the state line's farther down? No, it's state line right here on this side of the pillar. You can see. Okay, selfie time. There's something on the maps called the enormous tree, but in all honesty, you've been passing for the past 10 miles or so, just these massive trees. There's been some massy junies. I think this is an oak, but there's just been some big ums. I'm trying to zoom in, sorry, this app is stupid. Yeah, this one's called enormous, this is the one called enormous tree. Is this an enormous tree? Yeah. That's an enormous belly. Oh, it's not an enormous belly. That's it's not nice. Going. This is the enormous tree. Honestly, the Junies were just as big as this. Well, not as tall, but just as fat. Fatter? Yeah. That's a, that is an enormous tree. It's hard to film these things. Oh, well. Is that a trail log? It might be a trail log. No. What is it? Actually, very surprised that oh, it's like a gurney. It's like a trail or something. Yeah, I was gonna touch on that. Actually, very surprised with how well the TRT is like defined and how much uh, awareness is around it. That there's not any trail logs. Um, I don't know. It just might be something they do, but I was actually expecting trail logs. But yeah. Haven't seen one, and we're getting close to 90 miles in, a little less, so, yeah. Just sign your name elsewhere, I guess. Sign your name in your own journal. Don't sign it on any of this stuff. Put it in your own words and journal. McKenna Point. Yeah, you got a pretty point there, McKenna. You do indeed have a point. All right, so we're a little less than four miles to the turn off to Tramway. Um, mile like 93.4, somewhere in there. Um, Tramway's a little like corner store that's a half mile off trail. Um, I don't know what else it is, but we'll see. So we're gonna use that as a resupply point. Um, wanted to pop in here and talk about the film from yesterday and a little bit this morning. So if you're planning on your miles, 
Um, once you leave Armstrong Pass, which drops you down and, climb, and then you climb up that uh, Frio Peak Junction Summit um, at like 9,700 feet, you don't drop for a long time. Um, so you drop to Star Lake, but then right after Star Lake, you just ridge run for, I don't know, four miles, five miles. It's a long time until you drop again. Um, so if you don't wanna camp at high elevation, I would link your miles up a little differently. Camp a little before Armstrong Pass or make sure your miles can push you through. Um, like don't camp where we camped last night because pretty much as soon as we got up and over that mountain uh, ridge line, the weather just changed a whole lot. So I wanted to put that in there just to kind of a little bit of words of wisdom. Again, do what you will, but I don't know. It would have been more pleasant if we camped out of the clouds. So yeah, really cruisy trail um, since then though. Just been this, pretty sweet. All right, so I think that's where we're going. Two and a half or might be the three and a half or um, to get off to the tramway. Resupply and food, here we come. So it's been drizzling on and off all day. And we're a few miles, underneath two miles, to the turn off the tramway. And it started getting heavier. It uh, started picking up. The forecast said it was supposed to stop around nine. It's a little after 10 o'clock now. Oh, buddy. It's hard to forecast these mountains, though. You got a giant lake, massive body of water, massive different wind systems coming around it. I'm gonna stop talking and put the camera away because it's getting wet. All right, so this is Cottonwood Creek. Ooh, I almost missed a step. Um, pretty sure it's a year-round water source. Haven't pointed out a lot of water source because we're doing it in a lot of snow, so it doesn't really have a point. But yeah, a lot of water in these mountains. So it's, it's that way, but it, if we want to go to the gas station, it's that way. Let's go to the gas station. So yeah, we are going to the corner store. About half a mile off, maybe a little longer. We shall see. Popped us out at one of the base camps of the ski mountain we've been walking around. So, store, it's a little farther than half a mile. Um, done about 0.4, might be 0.3, 0.4 more this way. So, pretty cool. All right, so we're at the food mart, resupplied. And we asked him if we could drive stuff out in his parking lot, and he said yes, but the wind is so aggressive. There's like multiple rocks on everything right now that it's just a pain to try to dry it out. So this market, super good, super fat, hiker friendly. Let's try to get some dry on some stuff. Wow, this wind is nuts. Um, I might have to pick up that fly because it's not, it's just gonna rip. Um, but that's the main point. Get that dried as well. That needs to be dried, so. If this gets dried, that's just a happy little bit extra, okay? Come stop in at the tramway, super hiker friendly. Um, charging some stuff up, um, trying to dry some stuff out. Ask him first before you do it. Really friendly guy. And um, yeah, there's a restaurant next door if you want that too. Pretty good selection of food, fair resupply. Um, some stuff's pricier than others, but that's just what you get with these corner store markets. All right. <coughs> oh, get that zooming on that pulled pork life, baby. All right, it's about noon. Still hanging outside the market. Um, super nice guy, as I said. While I was drying some stuff out, which there is now seven rocks and a bear canister on top of that sleeping bag. It's gonna take a crane to lift it off the ground now. But um, while I was drying stuff out, Magpie ran over to the restaurant to get some food so we can eat, do a little bit of charging, um, and try to get ready for our last. We have rest of today, then two full days, we should finish in the early morning. But we've had two locals out while we've been sitting here tell us that Raleigh Pit Peak. Relay Peak. Relay Peak is pretty gnar. So 
But then we also ran into a counterclockwise hiker that said he got over it, so I don't know. The but we're not. We had to go over it last night during the storm, so. And we're also not peak bagging it. We're going over the side on the Tahoe Rim Trail. Yeah, so, I don't know what that meant, but we'll figure it out, I guess. We'll figure it out. For now, we're just going to eat. Good stuff. All right, so apparently we were told many times that this is the waterless stretch um, from Highway ooh, 207 um, forward for the next, oop, sorry. Hang on, Dan. Um, from Highway 207 um, for the next 15 miles going counterclockwise. So we were told this was the waterless stretch. As you saw, there was a creek right there, but um, it might honestly start from there. That's on, for counterclockwise hikers, that's on the other side of Highway 207, like maybe half a mile in, so. Yeah, I mean, we've ran into so much snow melt. We uh, didn't want to pack out the amount of literage we are, but also didn't want to take that risk because a lot of locals while we were hanging out at that store said it's still waterless. So, we're both carrying about three leads. Um, yeah, that's the gist. a really good view of South Lake. Look at that. Beautiful. Hello. So you can see our progression. I'm assuming Tahoe City is somewhere over there. Might even be farther over there. But we ran all those mountains. Um, ran all those. Ran that. Came up that. Dropped down. Pretty cool. Um, if it wasn't as cloudy, you'd be able to see it a little bit better. That mountain range, that snowpack over there, that was the brutal stuff. That might be Echo Lake area on the backside of that. Not positive, but whew, good miles, good miles. Nice. All right, so we have officially passed mile 100. I think we're at like 100.5 maybe. Um, so, got a few more miles to the top of this climb, around 8,800 feet. Been steadily climbing since the highway, but, um, Gonna take a break here in a minute, check our maps because I was just looking forward in the map section and in about nine miles, a little under now, you cross Highway 50 and there's a comment, not a comment, it was in the description of the maps that said for counterclockwise hikers, no camping from there until like 16 miles away. So that means we'd have to do 20, four miles from like here um, and it's already like three o'clock or we do nine more miles in camp at the camping boundary. So I'm gonna look into that in the maps more, see if there's any way around that uh, kind of cut off because the way we're moving, we would get there pretty early at like six o'clock. So we're gonna look, look into it, see what it's a boot. All right, so decision made. Uh, we only have about eight more miles and some change left on the day to the end of the like right up on the border of the no camping zone because there's a closer campsite called north rim campsite i don't know huh she didn't know this time we no we're gonna go there north something campsite or north canyon north canyon campsite but it's a mile and a half off trail and it's a mile and a half 
straight down uh, all the elevation we've just gained. So um, we're just going to call it about eight and a half miles. Still give us like a 24 mile day. Get there early-ish in the day, like six o'clock, 6.30 the latest, maybe even seven. Don't know because we're sitting right now. So yeah, not really mile stressed. Um, and that'll set us up a good day for tomorrow to get right to the base of Mount Raleigh. And then- Relay, um, Relay Peak. Huh? It's not Mount Raleigh, it's Relay, like a relay race. Hmm, I like Raleigh better. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it'll set us up for a good, good mileage um, zone. So eh, not really stressing. Have kind of a cutoff point that you, ca you gotta hit. So yeah, I didn't know about this. For people that are hiking the Tahoe Rim Trail, if you're going counterclockwise, um, yeah, there's a cutoff that you can't camp for 16 miles. And I guess for going clockwise, there's also a cutoff for 16 miles. There's a chunk of land that you can't camp for 16 miles unless you want to go off site to a campground. So, stay on your R's and W's. <laughs> Zoom. Oh baby, back up at 8,800 feet. Y'all ready for this view? Right. Windy, rainy, cold. Same, 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 same. That is a few and a half, folks. That is a few and a half. Sunny, I would sit on that bench. Yeah, if I could feel my hands, I would sit there. Really good bench. Really good bench. I was tempted to smell it, but I can't smell right now either because it's too cold. So, onwards we go. This is the best views we've had of the lake. Tired trail, I think. So this is the first time we've hit snow in a pretty good amount of time. Um, and it's patchy at best, so it's really nice. The trail drastically changed, like I said, after Mammoth Meadows, or I probably called it Big Meadows for some reason. Um, one of the two. Um, it's where we took lunch on our third day or fourth day. Hmm. It was the privy lunch, but yes, this is the first time we've hit like rough snow in a while. Not since then, but at least in a while. Backside of that ridge line. That is a very good sign. Good job. Good job, USFS in Nevada. Good job. Excellent sign. Bet Magpie's gonna take a picture. Where is the skittle? Skittle. All right, so very early camp as we predicted. Um, we are at mile 109.2, so we're about half a mile, maybe less, maybe more from the road. You can probably hear it. Um, and that's where the no camping restrictions begin. 
So technically we could have done another half mile, but I don't really want to camp that close to a highway. Um, we can already hear the highway up here. Um, funny enough, the one spot we wanted um, when we were at in a, what the tramway, the owner told us of a group of hikers going counterclockwise that were ahead of us. And I had a feeling they were gonna take the good camp spot. So instead I bushwhacked up that hill to see if anything was on the ridge line above it and there was but it was super windy so instead we're camping like pretty much very close to trail um try to find the best spot we could get but yeah we're gonna make do um yeah so we did 24.2 miles today 0.3 um getting out of camp at 8 a.m um two a two hour lunch and then also getting into camp at six like could have done a 30 today for that no camping zone. Yeah, I was actually oh, really. Yeah, I was really stoked to get big miles in today, but we had a stop. So, this is what I was going to get to next. Tent ripped. Um, this is our brand new tent. We've had it for five nights on the this through hike, and then maybe two nights of car camping. Um, so it's less than a week old, and it already ripped. Um, I'm pretty disappointed about that. Yes. Especially because we've started so many warranties with Big Agnes over the years that now they don't really do anything for us. No, so I don't know. We're going to either patch it or contact Big Agnes again or just buy a new tent, honestly. And then... It shouldn't rip in ten, seven days, though. Yeah, I'm honestly just maybe leaning towards buying a new tent and then using this one as like a uh, quote unquote crap tent to. We spent good money on this, though. It's brand new. It shouldn't rip within. I can't start another case with them. Um, but yeah, that's that's a super bummer. It shouldn't have ripped that quickly. Um, yeah, the fly. And then there was another micro rip somewhere in here. I don't know. If we can start the receipt, I'll just start it through my email. Yeah. I've only done one. But they need the product, and then we would be out of tent again. Yeah. So yeah, good day though. Um, easiest day by far on the Tahoe Wind Trail yet. Like, no snow. We've had our feet or actually dry by the time we reach camp. Um, pretty bonkers. Oh, and also the dry stretch from tramway to here, it's dry. Um, I can confirm that. No yeah, I'm glad we bought a gallon of water. Yeah, no snow melt either. It's like pretty dry. Um, so I can confirm that is a dry stretch. But yeah, good day. Um, able to cruise through miles because no snow. We could have done a 30, but no camping. I don't know, there's a lot of no's, but it's also a really good day. And tomorrow is the birthday. Am I gonna be a birthday baby, baby? You're gonna be the birthday boy. Birthday boy, cool. I didn't do anything cute for his birthday because I forgot because I'm a monster. <laughs> no, you're not. Um, all right, so that is day five. Last time I can use my hand, just one hand for the amount of days on trail. Um, day five, why is it blurry? Oh well, day five. Good day. <laughs>